Hey sweet friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Regina. For our first project, we're starting out with this little palette board that I found at the Goodwill for 99 cents. You can also get them at Walmart or any other craft store. We're gonna start with our Antique Wax by Classic Home, which I'm going to spread on here like a stain. I let it sit for a few minutes and then I go back with a dry paper towel and I wipe off any excess. I let it dry and then I take our Dollar Tree metal ribbon and I'm just going to cut that into a square frame. What I do is I just line up my ribbon and then I'm going to take these miter shears and I'm going to set it at a 45 degree angle and put that up against the shears. And then I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and just mark where I'm going to want to cut. Now these miter shears won't cut this ribbon. All you need is just a simple pair of scissors, but I needed to measure it out properly. So that's why I'm using the miter shears. So I just go ahead and cut those down to size. Once I get all of my cuts down, I'm then gonna go in and I'm just gonna start hot gluing this down. Nope, just kidding. We're not gonna glue it down yet. First, we're going to take some petroleum jelly, and this is gonna help with the distressing. So I'm just putting it on the edges of the board where natural distressing would occur, and I'm going to put it around all of the edges, and then I'll start to go into the center of the board. And there's no rhyme or reason, I'm just kind of globbing it on there until I'm satisfied with the way that I think it should be. So now I'm gonna take our Waverly chalk paint and plaster and I'm just gonna put some on there. I'm taking a foam roller brush and I'm just gently rolling over top of that petroleum jelly. Now I'm going to distress this so I don't need a full even coat. I'm just putting on a very light coat. And once I'm satisfied, I let that dry. Now I'm going in with a scraper and I'm just gently pushing up against where all of the um, Vaseline or petroleum jelly is and you can see how easily the paint is coming back. Once I'm happy with that, I take a wet, I'm sorry, it's a dry paper towel and I'm just wiping off any excess jelly that's coming through and then I take a sanding block and I go ahead and I sand that all down. Now we're going to glue down our metal Dollar Tree ribbon. I'm just kind of lining this up in a frame form as I cut it and be careful not to burn yourself like I did several times. I should probably have my little um, silicone fingers on so not to do that. And I go around with each piece and just put a thin layer of glue on just to tack that down. You can always go back in and insert some glue underneath if anything's sticking up. Now we're gonna take our Waverly chalk paint and uh, plaster again, and I'm just going to paint over top of the ribbon. This is going to take at least two coats. It was two coats for me. So I'm just gently going around and um, covering it, and then I put a second coat on, and I like the way that it looks now. So now I'm gonna take our Timeless Designs Rub On Transfers and Memories of Paris, which I will link below, um, I got them on Amazon and I'm just cutting out the piece that I'd like to use. Now, I hadn't planned on using a transfer um, until last minute. So take it from me, you're not gonna wanna do the petroleum jelly method of distressing if you're gonna put a uh, transfer down because what happened was is some of it went down pretty easy but then uh, the very last end where I'm working right now was really hard to get down. So I really had to easily burnish it just so it wouldn't wrinkle up and peel off. But I think it turned out great overall. You could easily add a shabby bow to that, um, whatever you'd like. For our next project, I'm going to take this IOD mold in frames. And I'm going to start with some cornstarch so that our air dry clay will release easier. And I'm just using the DOS air dry clay. I'll also link that below. What I do first is I go around and I just start filling my mold 
with the clay, making sure that I'm pressing down into all of the details um, and that it's full. And I go in with a spatula or a spackle knife and I do clean up all of the edges. Now that that's released, I go in and I decide that I'm going to create another mold but I'm going to do the entire thing. And I don't think the mold was made for this, but I'm gonna just mold out the whole thing and create a casting of the entire thing. So I get that all cleaned up and I pull that one out as well. I like the way it looks. Um, you can tell that the middle part is off center, but that's that's not gonna deter me to what I wanna use for what I wanna use it for. And I'm taking out my baking, um, my cooling rack because that will help these dry more evenly, which prevents cracking. Now, after they're dry, I do let them dry um, overnight and I do flip them kind of halfway in between. I do sand off any edges. Now with the open one, I take a piece of just an old picture and I glue it so that we have a backing to our frame. I'm gonna take my all-in-one paint in the color Peony. I love this pink paint. Please tell me below if, if you have a favorite pink because I have a really hard time finding um, just a really pale pink that I really, really like. And this one I think is gorgeous. So I go ahead and I get a nice coat on that and then I work on the second piece. Now, because the details are so deep and you're putting on a thicker coat, you can go in with a dry detail brush and just dip into those little pockets and then wipe it off on your paper or paper towel that you have with you. That way it doesn't pull and, and take away from the detail. Once I have the two coats on there and they're completely dry, now I'm gonna take these um, tissue papers that I printed out from the Graphics Fairy. She calls them sticker sheets and I'll link them below. And I'm just going to choose the ones that I want and I go in and fussy cut with a razor knife and cut around as close to um, the actual design as possible. I'm gonna use the matte Mod Podge and I'm just putting on a thin layer because these are just so tiny and I'm gonna get those put down first. And once I have them down, then I'll go back with a, thick, a thicker layer of Mod Podge and I'll just go over the entire center piece. I love Shabby Chic, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. It just makes my romantic heart super happy. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing, give me a thumbs up or comment below. It really helps my channel. Possibilities are endless here. It doesn't have to be Shabby Chic, it doesn't have to be pink. Just remember, you can always make it your own. Once I get that first piece finished, then I go for the second piece. And I just repeat the steps. I put on a thin layer, I lay down my little tissue piece, and then I go in and place my other tissue piece. And then again, I go in with a thicker layer of Mod Podge and I cover the entire center. These are turning out super sweet and would look really nice in a little girl's room. Remember, you don't always have to use Mod Podge. You can use any gel medium that you'd like to use. Once these dry, I'm going to take some seam binding from, um, I found this shop on Etsy and I'll link it below. I believe it was called My Scrap Cabin. Um, and she has a lot of the seam binding to offer. So what I do is I just cut it to the size that I want and I go ahead and just glue it to the back for a little hanger. And once I get that tacked down, then I just move to the other one and glue that one down as well. Now I made their hangers super short because I have a place in mind for them that I'd like them to go. These turned out super cute and I can't wait to, to try more in a different design. Now I'm going to take this picture that I found at the Goodwill for only $1.99. I really like the frame so I knew I wanted to do something special with it. 
So I start out by removing all of the staples first and the glass in the picture. And then I'm gonna take this um, chicken wire that I found at Walmart in the floral section and I'm going to unravel it and fit it to the inside of my frame. I'm going in with the wire cutters and just snipping slowly so that I don't cut myself. I think this might not be as sharp as the Dollar Tree ribbon. <laughs> Once I get that in there, I start to bend it towards the frame and I take a staple gun and I just start to staple the entire wire down to the uh, frame. As you can see, I'm using my staple puller stool tool to kind of mush that into the crevices and I'm kind of pulling it tight at the same time, smushing it down and then going in with the stapler and stapling it down to the frame. Once I get it stapled down, I'm gonna go in and just trim off any excess. Okay, now once it's all finished, I'm going to Take it up a notch. So I take this olive crest mold from IOD and some DOS clay, and I'm going to start with, of course, corn starching our mold. Then I start with my clay and I'm just gonna start working it in my fingers, just making it more pliable and warm. I go ahead and smush it down to create my casting and I clean up around the micro edge, taking a spackle knife if needed, and just cleaning up the edges. Then I pop him out and I set him to the side so that I can begin on the next piece. Again, I'm gonna go in with our cornstarch so that our clay will pop out easier and this really does help. And I'm going in to the finer details first and making sure my clay is nice and, nice and compacted. Again, I'll go in with my spackle knife and I will clean up all of my edges and then pop him out. Once I get that popped out, then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to repeat the steps. I'm going to need to create two swirls for each side and then the little almost fleur de lis in the middle. I'm kind of getting an eyeball picture of what exactly measurements and where I want to put this first and then I kind of slide it together and once I decide that's where I want it I'm going to take my tight bond quick and thick and I'm just going to get everything tacked down. This project was definitely a labor of love. It ends up being a lot of mold work but it turns out gorgeous. I seriously have to giggle to myself because who would have thought a $1.99 primitive schoolhouse would have turned into a shabby chic stunner. So I'm just moving from piece to piece, putting on my tight bond, and then I'm taking a small paintbrush and just painting that glue to the edge, especially the edge because you want to make sure that it doesn't lift in any spots as it dries it's going to shrink so you want to make sure you get a good glue um, on the edge of it so now i've gone in and i've created another set for the bottom i measure it out and again i go in and start gluing those down as well while I think it's pretty, I have to be a little extra, so now I gotta put something on the sides. So what I do is mold two of the pieces that I'm pulling out now, and again, a couple of those tiny pieces we used at the top and the bottom, and I cut the center piece out of the first mold, and then insert those two side pieces. Um, now I'm gonna take my Waverly chalk paint, Nope, oopsie, that's the folk art chalk paint in Adirondack white. And I'm just going to go over the entire frame, getting into all of the details and give that one good solid coat. Once it's dry, I do go in and add a second coat. And I'm absolutely in love with this already. There are so many things that I can see happening here. 
Once it's dry, I want to do some distressing. So I start with this little sanding block, which was a total waste of time. Um, so I go downstairs with my hand, my little mouse sander, my Black & Decker mouse sander, and I go ahead and give it a nice distressing. And you can see I'm already thinking of all the possibilities. We can add some greenery and a pretty shabby bow, which is super cute, or you could add some kind of greenery with a little um, wreath in the middle. And I love the way everything turned out. I hope you do too. Please let me know down below. With the project there, I think even with um, some lace, you, you don't have to have the dollar store ribbon. You could totally have some lace to do that and create the frame as well. I think that would be just as beautiful.